After I won the many trials, the difficult challenges, and the training in Numina, my name is Rotam, and I can still feel the lashes from the Drill Master. I became a full-pledged battle brother of the Third Company. We're Task Force Shadowblade, and we're in Constantium. We're supposed to do recon on a nobleman's spire. As Intel gathered has it, there are genus dealers here, but we've seen more. A massive number of Hive Highborn hostages, most of them key to the functions of this world, we were the first on the walls of terror. We're here to protect mankind. We're here next to the Spire on a neighboring building, with troops from the Cadian 73rd on the task force under our command, but we're supposed to just do reconnaissance until told otherwise. I'm thinking this just as the Vox comms comes alive and Captain Oberek speaks. Brothers, you have completed your mission perfectly. I've been informed by Segmentum Command that the threat level of this world has increased after this information was revealed of the massive highborn kidnappings and a detachment of Marines Malevolent is 24 hours away from dropping here. Malevolent, I think to myself. I remember them. My other brothers growl in disgust. Captain Obirek continues. They are coming here and doing the only thing they know, massacre, so before that can happen, as we are in control of this area of operations, I say, New mission. We'll take this right now, complete our mission and be done. Any objections, speak now, brothers, as this may challenge what you hold truth from the Codex. Starters. Complete silence from our end. We knew better. Flexibility and the protection of the people of the Imperium. We're here to win, but not like a chainsaw through a meat pack, but as a scalpel that cuts out the cancer so the body may live. All right, stand by for new orders, says the captain. New orders. The task force will be split into three fire teams. Team 1 on ambush. The Cadians will simulate a police action on the first floors of the spires. The Xeno worshippers will know something is up and will come down. As long as other stragglers engage, go in and eliminate. Team 2 aerial assault will rappel down the spire and come in from the windows. Team 3 sniper overwatch will pick off all clear targets that come near the hostages. All clear. Yes, Captain, we all say. Then let's move. The Cadians are moving. Get into position now. And we move. I'm on Team 2, aerial assault. More like covert ops than anything, until we engage as we board a requisition nobleman private yatch, obtained by a third party, especially for this contingency. To fly over there inconspicuously, we drop and hook to the top wall right away. This is Roel from Team 3, Sniper Overwatch. We will mark hostiles and hostages on your displays. Mission goes once Team 1 engages. Could be any second, he says as we are ready to go. I hear an explosion from the street below. Execute. I hear from the captain and we all move. We are rappelling down and I hear multiple plasteel glass windows shattering from the high impact bolters. We crash down from the window with a flash grenade. What we saw, we didn't expect. There were Janus dealers with plasma charges attached to their bodies. If we fired at them, the whole spire would come down in flames. I screamed on the Vox, Team 3. The Xenos cult has suicide vests, headshots only. Captain Obirek, who was leading my team, said, Good catch, Rotam. Okay, brothers, blades only. Let's go. He says that as a lot of the Jan stealers get dropped by snipers, a huge blade fight is now happening in the room. It happens fast. The cult was not ready, and just a pile of mangled corpses remains. The hostages survived, but the genus dealers are not that easy to uproot. Team 1 report, says the captain. The Vox comes alive once again. One injured, minor, being attended, no casualties. Cadians magnificent as always, sir. Good, the captain says. Now stand by for orders, the captain says, as he himself appears to be processing new intel. He starts pointing out to the hostages. You, you and you in the back, go to the ship that will be out of the hole we came through. Rotam and the rest of Team 2 load the Gene Stealers with the vests on it too now. We do it right away, but one of the now freed hostages with a strange calm demeanor asks the captain, Thank you for saving us, my lord. May the Emperor bless your path. Don't you believe this is an unnecessary risk? The vests on our transport. No, they are deactivated, he says, as they all board the ship and leave slowly. A second later, one of the other hostages runs in panic to me and tells me, My lord, my lord, the people you made board the ship. They held us captive. They hid in our group as prisoners after they saw you. Captain Obirek intervenes. We know, my lady, please. And all the hostages get to cover. Team 3, take out the transport now. And a second later, a plasma explosion disintegrates the yacht we came in along with the fake hostages. 
The transport was on servitor autopilot, and we know this. This was the plan, he says. You are now free. The Cadian 73 thou will take command of this spire until the quarantine is over, and our mission is complete. Welcome back, my friends. Today, we will talk about one of the most interesting and somewhat overlooked Adeptus Astartes. Chapters the Raptors. If you wish to support the channel, remember to subscribe, like the video if you enjoyed it, and leave a comment to tell me what you think. I try to interact with everyone so we form a great community around these amazing stories and lore from the Warhammer 40k universe. Now let's get started. Called Reasonable by Many, a long history of tragic conflict and incredible loss has made the Raptors into an astart chapter that prioritizes the acquisition of strategic objectives and the elimination of the enemy in a way that minimizes the losses and maximizes the damage to the enemy. That's why the Raptors are all about being master tacticians and users of the underutilized tactical acumen of adaptability. Now let's look at their history. Their origins are not completely known, but some say they are of Raven Guard origin, as their original Space Marine initiates came from the 19th Legion. They were training on the Raven Guard homeworld of Deliverance during the start of the Heresy, and they were rescued by Primarch Corvus Corax. Now let's stop for a minute because the name of the Raptors chapter also coincides with the Raptors from the Horus Heresy era, because during the war against the traitors, the Primarch of the Raven Guard, Corvus Corax, received authorization from the Emperor to replenish the losses of his legion using pure Astarta and Primarch Gene Seed. This produced Space Marines proven bigger, stronger, faster and tougher than regular legionaries. However, traitor Primarch from the Alpha Legion, Omegon got this information, and in a covert operation, he tainted the gene seed with demon blood. And this was the beginning of the end of the Raptors of the Horus Heresy era, as there began to show signs of mutation too severe to overlooked, and the program was ended, and the surviving Raptors were destroyed by the Space Wolves, this said. They were always loyal, and their gene father, Corvus Corvus, Corax always refused to sacrifice them. Now, back to the current Imperium era, Raptors chapter, they don't have this problem as they were untainted initiates from Deliverance, and they were part of what was left of the 19th Legion, and after showing great courage against Chaos, they were granted full chapter status by Imperial Regent at the time, Roboot Gilliman. Let's look before we continue to the chapter's organization. The Raptors, like their genetic ancestors, the Raven Guard, adhere to the broad organizational patterns and provisions outlined in the Codex Astartes. However, as a chapter, they view the Codex as a highly effective and proven set of strategic and operational guidelines rather than an inviolable and unquestionable dogma. This has been looked with suspicious eyes by many, mainly the Ultramarines that join the Raptors in operations. The Raptors maintain a high degree of adaptability in their deployments and structures, and they prioritize hit-and-run tactics in combat, camouflage, firing from distance, using cover, maximizing damage while minimizing losses, taking objectives and destroying the enemy without exposing themselves to needless damage. The Raptors, like other Astartes chapters, maintain a librarius of formidable psychers who have been trained to command the warp's power at the highest levels. Each chapter chooses its own librarians, either from seed planets, like the majority of its initiates, or from the ranks of talented psychers brought to the Scholastica Psychana of the Adeptus Astra Telepathica. The majority of chapters train and evaluate selected psychers in accordance with the ancient doctrines outlined in the Codex Astartes. Librarians of the Raptors Chapter received this training and, with a few minor deviations from tradition, are taught to abide by the Codex. Now let's stop for a bit here, but what is their homeworld? The Raptors are purposefully evasive when discussing their homeworld, and this is for a very good reason. Also remember their Raven Guard origin, and the knowledge of the power stealth brings. This is true both among their fellow combatants, and in conversations with outsiders. It is inherent in their character to be secretive, and to value the implementation of stealth with care. The loss of their first home near the Eye of Terror to the Fifth Black Crusade by Abaddon the Despoiler only serves to heighten the Raptors' anxiety on this matter. Preserving their designated home in a secure manner is unquestionably a top priority for the Raptors, as is absolutely crucial to keep your home unknown in order to protect the source of your power, this meaning culture, recruits, supplies, and everything else related to making them what they are. However, the Adeptus Administratum and the Chapter are now concerned about this issue. 
Not only could this act of being seen as of independence have heretical repercussions, but it also impeded communications between Terra and the chapter. The name of the raptor's fortress monastery is also kept confidential by the chapter, who generally refer to it as Prime, despite the fact that it is believed to be located on a planet named Numina, Ra, Badwater or Cortispol, in the Sutter Spiral Nebula of the Segmentum Solar. The raptors are notorious for eschewing the glory of close quarters combat, favoured by many other chapters, in favour of the straightforward expediency of a clean kill from a distance with ranged weapons. The Raptors, like their parent chapter, the Raven Guard, make extensive use of scout marines dispersed throughout their task forces and maintain a sizable contingent of land speeders of all varieties, as well as a core of diverse armoured vehicles. After determining the most effective pressure point at which to break the enemy, they prefer to employ these assets and their assault units in precision strikes to overwhelm the enemy at strategically crucial moments in battle. The essence of the Raptors' combat doctrine is their flexibility and willingness to adapt to their surroundings. As they prepare to engage their opponents, these Space Marines are always meticulous in identifying and maximizing the use of all of their assets. These typically include assets that are not identified within the Codex Astartes' constraints. Even when operating within the strictures of this tome, these Battle Brothers may choose to take actions that others may view as disgraceful. For members of the Raptors chapter, accomplishment is the only metric that matters. Honor and grandeur are noble concepts, but a decisive victory is far more valuable than either. The majority of the distinctive combat strategies employed by the Raptors stem from this concept. Numerous Space Marine chapters disdain the use of secrecy, deception, espionage and counterintelligence. The Raptors are aware, however, that those who would use such subterfuge against members of the Adeptus Astartes have a limited number of countermeasures. However, the Raptors chapter employs these tactics with zeal and consistency throughout its conflicts. Often, Space Marines can gain a significant tactical advantage by deceiving their opponents about the timing, nature, and objectives of an attack. Similarly, by meticulously surveying a region prior to launching an attack, the Raptors are frequently able to insert their forces without their opponents realizing their number or nature. However, such insertions are wholly dependent on the precision and dependability of their initial reconnaissance efforts. This necessitates a level of dependence on their scout marine units that transcends that of many other space marine chapters. Typically, when on scouting missions, the chapter's battle brothers concentrate on both intelligence gathering and countering the enemy's efforts. In the same way that they attempt to penetrate the fog of conflict, they may also deliver false information that appears credible. As a result, while the Space Marines penetrate directly into the weakest areas of their opponent's strategy, the Raptors' foes are unable to pinpoint the core of the Raptors' forces. This tactic has frequently allowed the Raptors to engage opponents with an even greater numerical advantage than Imperial Space Marine forces typically possess. In accordance with their willingness to utilize all available resources, the Raptors chapter frequently assumes command of all Astra Militarum units in each theater. Instead of deferring to the organization's inherent leadership, these Space Marines deploy their members among the purely human forces and then exercise direct control over their disposition and tactics. There are two preferred elements to any strategy that these combat comrades are likely to execute during an engagement. The first is their unwavering confidence in their marksmanship. It is unknown whether the Raptors' superior marksmanship is a result of their genetic makeup or their training. In either case, these Space Marines are extraordinarily skilled sharpshooters, even by the Adeptus Astartes' exceptionally high standards. The second fundamental strategy is the hit-and-run strategy. The Raptors, Chapters Assault Motorcycles, Land Speeders and Jump Packs are of exceptional quality. Prior to a more conventional engagement, these Space Marines prefer to use guerrilla tactics and ambushes to deplete enemy forces. As a result of millennia of refining their techniques, these combat comrades are frequently capable of annihilating enemy forces with surgical precision, thereby minimizing enemy presence in future conflicts. Considering these tactics and their extraordinary marksmanship, it is not surprising that some have compared the chapter to Space Marine Assassins. To accommodate this tendency, the Raptors maintain an atypically large number of land speeders in their arsenal. In accordance with the importance these Space Marines place on independent thought, 
Each of the Raptors' businesses is essentially autonomous. Only in response to a particularly dire peril do multiple businesses band together. Over the course of several millennia, they have fought wherever they were required across the Imperium. The Raptors as a chapter have been brought to the verge of extinction multiple times, but have survived and returned to full vigor when other chapters would have perished. One of the Raptors' defining characteristics is their ability to quickly adapt to changing conditions and respond to the fortunes or calamities of battle. This has instilled in them a general disdain and suspicion for the mere trappings of honor and grandeur, favoring results by any means necessary. When confronted with insurmountable odds, the Raptors demonstrate the ability to bend rather than break, alter their tactics, and retreat in order to fight again, whereas more prideful chapters would likely choose to fight to the death. The Raptors prize the art of concealment and employ secrecy and surprise as their primary weapons. As a result, they have always developed the ability to see clearly through the fog of war and strike at the enemy's hidden heart, where they can inflict the most harm and accomplish their goals without being distracted by hubris or dogmatism. In order to achieve this objective, the chapter's battle brothers are trained in methods that are remarkably dissimilar from those of most other Space Marine chapters. The attitude towards the Codex Astartes is arguably the most controversial aspect of these changes. The Raptors view the Codex Astartes as an indispensable strategy and tactics manual. However, they do not believe that its teachings must be followed without question. The Raptors chapter is ultimately focused on achieving success in all its endeavors. Failure is never acceptable, but neither is an approach that wastes the lives of combat comrades or irreplaceable military equipment. When a target is identified, these space marines relentlessly pursue it. Nevertheless, their strategies are rarely direct. They analyze a situation thoroughly in order to achieve their objective with minimal risk. During missions in which the Raptors interact closely with space marines from other chapters, this perspective has frequently caused tension. The Raptors have been accused of timidity on multiple occasions by other Adeptus Astartes formations. Members of the Raptors do not respond strongly to such accusations, but they rarely view them as a serious insult. The Raptors, for their part, consider the more traditional chapters to be ignorant traditionalists. While they rarely initiate such competition, they tolerate it and reluctantly engage in it when it does not impede their ability to achieve their goals. In addition to playing a crucial role in their decision-making process, adaptability is also essential. Conditions in the field frequently shift with alarming rapidity. Before a Space Marine of the Raptors chapter can undertake officer responsibilities, he undergoes extensive training in every aspect of battlefield awareness and observation. At each level of command, tactic awareness and strategic prioritization play crucial roles. These combat comrades are expected to recognize and respond appropriately to any changes that occur during the course of a battle, including unexpected adversary responses. Throughout the chapter, mindless obedience is discouraged vehemently. At the appropriate times, all these space marines are expected to act on their own initiative. However, such actions must be consistent with the larger battle strategy. Battle brothers contemplate unconventional strategies when preparing for any conflict. These include unconventional deployment and infiltration methods. Occasionally, they have assembled ad hoc units specifically suited to resolving a particular tactical problem. In a similar fashion, the Battle Brothers of the Raptors chapter are willing to sacrifice the articles of faith and honor in the name of victory, as well as minor objectives, in order to achieve overall military success. This concept is alien to the majority of other Adeptus Astartes chapters, but well within the goal-oriented flexibility of the Raptors. The key to propagating this ideal among the chapter's battle brothers is their continued focus on the overall conflict and objectives rather than individual honor or triumph. At various points in their history, the Raptors have been on the verge of extinction, but the chapter has continued to function, rebuild, and confront its adversaries once more. It is ingrained in the Raptor psyche that the chapter will endure at all costs, and that the destruction and reconstruction of all Adeptus Astartes chapters are inevitable. As one combat brother perishes, another takes his place to continue the never-ending conflict in which the gene seed endures. But the warrior does not. Death is the universe's only constant, and regardless of victory or defeat, it is the only genuine reward a battle brother can anticipate.
In addition to casting a dark cloud over the Battle Brothers of the Raptors chapter, this outlook imbues them with the stoic realism to face whatever the universe can hurl at them and fulfill their duty until they die and are replaced by another. The galaxy and its many horrors hold no surprises for them, and they know that somewhere in the inky black is the spot where they will fall. Having served their emperor and temporarily repelled the darkness that strives to consume humanity, other chapters may find these attitudes to be at variance with a strong devotion to the emperor and the righteous plight of humanity, but the raptors see them as inextricably linked, and their chapter has always done its duty and remained unquestionably loyal to the Imperium. Along with their duty to their brothers and their oath to the Emperor, the Raptors bear the knowledge that death is only a matter of time with them every day. Now, I want to address the pretty similarity we can make between Corvus Corax's Raptor Project and the Primaris Space Marines we know now, since the Raptor Project Marines were also stronger, bigger, faster, and more resilient than their current legionaries. Prior to sabotage by the Alpha Legion, the Raptor Project was significantly more successful than the current Primaris program, which is unrelated in scope, of course. They had a significantly increased success rate for organ and gene seed implantation. This included a much shorter implantation period of mere weeks, a 99% survival rate, and an alluded to enlarged recruit age window, as no longer needed to recruit at an early age for this. The original uncorrupted Raptors were taller, faster and stronger, but their organs were identical to those they already possessed, merely enhanced, a complete improvement, an upgrade for their time, and, as their battle records show, quite superior. This can lead us easily to know that Belisarius' call just continued the Emperor's work instead of creating a new one from scratch, and he had access to Corvus Corax's work as well. But doing a comparison, avoiding scale, obviously, you can say the Raptor project was better in many ways and it was probably what Call used as a baseline. The Raptors Space Marines have received Primaris Space Marines reinforcements and Primaris tech from the Indomitus fleets, so they can now cross the Rubicon Primaris as their ancestors did. And that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching and for your support. Remember to subscribe and like the video. I hope you enjoyed this video and had a good time. Much more is to come. For now, keep the light of the Emperor burning, my friends.